In this video, we will take a brief look at the history of virtuoso piano music and why it's such a fascinating topic. I'll then define some parameters and ground rules for the discussion before finally presenting my own list of what I think are the 10 most difficult works in the piano repertoire and what makes them so hard. In 1869, Mili Balakarev composed the piano fantasy Islamé for the Russian pianist Nikolai Rubinstein. With only two months to learn the piece, Rubinstein only just had it ready in time for the concert, saying it was so difficult that very few pianists would ever be able to play it. Soon afterwards, Liszt performed the incredible feat of playing the piece back by ear to an amazed Rubinstein. Whatever its difficulties, they were no match for the genius of Liszt, but the incident kick-started Islamay's legend, setting it on course to become a staple of the piano repertoire for the next 50 years. Its reputation of being notoriously difficult began almost immediately, with Balakarev, a virtuoso concert pianist in his own right, saying there were parts he simply couldn't manage, and Skriabin famously injuring himself attempting to master it. Then, in 1908, Ravel set about to write a piece even more difficult than Islamay. This would turn out to be the movement Scarbo from his suite Gaspard de la Nuit. And although the difficulties in the two pieces are of quite different natures, most pianists agree Ravel succeeded in his aim. With Islamay's status usurped, it slowly faded away, not played anywhere near as often today as it once was, while Gaspard de la Nuit is now an established pillar of the piano repertoire, remaining one of the ultimate tests of a pianist's technique. In 1921, Igor Stravinsky wanted to entice Arthur Rubinstein to play his music, so he transcribed three movements from his ballet Petrushka for piano. Stravinsky thought that making a technically challenging arrangement would appeal more to Rubinstein, but he was a bit too successful in this regard, as Rubinstein never actually played it. However, it did catch the attention of other pianists, notably Vladimir Horowitz, who played the first movement, and Alexis Weisenberg, who was featured playing it in a spectacular video recorded in the 1960s. But it had gained a reputation of being extremely unpianistic, written by a non-pianist composer who didn't understand how to write effectively for the instrument. It should be noted that Ravel wasn't a pianist either, but he took the time to consult with his pianist friend, Ricardo Venus, to make the piano writing in Gaspar more idiomatic. Petrushka languished virtually unplayed for decades until Maurizio Pellini's 1972 recording exploded onto the scene, sending shockwaves throughout the piano world. Pellini managed to take what many pianists thought unplayable and deliver a performance of such astonishing drive, colour, energy and perfection that legions of young pianists were inspired to take up Petrushka and start performing it. Pellini showed that far from being unpianistic, if one possessed the requisite technical tools, Petrushka could be an incredibly exciting and effective piece, full of creative pianistic effects and virtuoso flair. Ironically, it was Stravinsky's lack of pianistic background that forced him to devise his own toolbox of pianistic devices and effects, which he then used to produce novel textures and sounds that rivaled the Impressionists in their reimagining of what the piano could do. Petrushka's popularity among pianists took off after Pellini's recording, but most performances lacked his polish and rhythmic drive, and the piece became a bit of a pianistic graveyard at piano competitions. So this is the traditional history of the most difficult piece for piano. However, there are plenty of other pieces that could potentially hold the mantle. Some people say that Boulez's second sonata claimed the top spot from Petrushka, after another Pellini recording came out in 1976 of this sonata, although that work is only performed by a few pianists regularly, so I'm not sure it should be in contention. More about this later. Before getting to the list of hardest pieces, we need to ask whether the topic of most difficult piece is even something worth discussing at all. What does it matter if one piece is harder than another, or one pianist can play something faster than another? Well, it goes to the concept of the virtuoso. Virtuosity is an essential part of solo performance, and the element of risk and excitement it contributes is important. This goes beyond the gladiatorial aspect of a pianist confronting and vanquishing a piece's difficulties. 
It also relates to the element of human struggle that is a constant in all our lives. Many difficult pieces could be simplified, but removing this element of struggle would change the character of the music. Beethoven was well aware that some of his Hammerklavier sonata was virtually unplayable, and it represented to him the manifestation of humanity's struggle, and also his own very acute personal struggles. Liszt was once told about a pianist playing an arrangement of his Rigoletto paraphrase for the left hand alone. The pianist made a big show of taking out a handkerchief with his right hand during the performance and blowing his nose. Liszt just smiled and said, It is necessary. Showmanship and virtuosity are necessary for so much piano music, and although treating technique as an end in itself results in empty and boring performances, if integrated with the other musical elements, it can transform the music. Let's talk briefly about what pieces are eligible for inclusion on this list, because composing something difficult can be done by pretty much anyone, but it's doubtful anyone would want to listen to, much less learn it. So you could say that the pieces on this list must all be ones in which the difficulty is an integral part of the music. In other words, the music must be worthwhile and have value. But then what about the many worthwhile virtuoso works that for whatever reason are seldom, if ever, played? Pieces in this category are Sarabji's Opus Clavicembalisticum, Alcon's Concerto for Solo Piano, or the music of the new complexity, such as Michael Finnessy's Country Tunes, all serious compositions that happen to also be obscenely difficult, but they simply aren't played very often and aren't considered part of the standard repertoire. So in order to avoid the subjectivity of deciding what music is worthwhile or not, I'll sidestep the issue and just say that the main criterion for inclusion on this list is that the pieces must be part of the standard repertoire, a term I'll define shortly. And to keep things simple, I won't be looking at concertos or chamber music. Even after confining the list of eligible pieces to those in the standard repertoire, there are other factors that affect the difficulty of a piece, most notably the tempo it's played at. Any piece can be made easy by adopting a sufficiently slow tempo, but the tempo has to be musically justified. Most often this applies to difficult pieces being played slower than is the norm to make them easier. But the converse also applies where pieces that aren't generally considered very difficult can become almost impossible when played fast enough. Scarlatti's Sonata K141 is sometimes played by intermediate piano students, but listen to this performance by Marta Argerich. No student could play the piece like her. Indeed, not many pianists in the world could. And then there are the pieces that are mostly not very difficult, but contain a passage or two that are near impossible. Should these qualify? An example of this is the B-flat prelude by Rachmaninoff. The piece is difficult to be sure, but not in the league of Scarbo or Islamé, but towards the end there is a sequence of chords that are meant to be played at the same speed as the rest of the piece, but to do so is almost impossible. I know of no performance, recorded or live, that doesn't either slow this part down substantially, leave out piles of notes, or is full of mistakes. Have a listen to Pletnev, one of the world's supreme technicians coming undone in this part. So we will use the following criteria for eligibility. 1. The piece must be in the standard repertoire. To quantify this, we will say the piece must have been programmed by at least five recording artists, that is, signed to one of the big labels. 2. The majority of the piece must be difficult, not just an isolated passage. 3. Difficulty is measured at the most common tempo. So a piece's difficulty will be gauged by how hard it is to play at its generally accepted tempo. And finally, the piece or movement is 15 minutes or less. This is to exclude works that are more feats of stamina than dexterity. So let's begin. Starting off at number 10, we have Rachmaninoff's Etude Opus 33 Number 6. 
There are quite a few of the etudes that could make this list, as well as some preludes such as the E-flat minor double note prelude, Opus 23 number 9. But this etude is generally considered the hardest due to its unrelenting presto tempo and continual piling up of difficulties throughout its short duration. It requires not just exceptional finger dexterity and strength, but also fast jumps and position changes without interrupting the flow of the music. Number 9. Prokofiev's Toccata Prokofiev composed his Toccata at 21, while still a student at the St. Petersburg Conservatory. It is often played at piano competitions and has always been a favourite of pianists with exceptional techniques wanting to show them off. While not as relentlessly demanding as Schumann's Toccata and musically inferior, it requires extraordinary command of double notes and choral technique. Marta Argerich's recording is incredible and was much admired by Vladimir Horowitz, who himself played this when he was younger. Number 8. Scarbo from Gaspard Delonui by Ravel. No list of most difficult pieces would be complete without Scarbo. It's a work that receives a lot of bad performances, as it's possible to hide a multitude of sins with the pedal, and in a way, it's a lot more forgiving than other pieces on this list. But make no mistake, Scarbo is hard, especially if you maintain a consistent tempo throughout. Most pianists start it very fast, only to slow down once the difficulties start to mount up, which destroys the effect Ravel is striving for, that's a menacing goblin that grows to the size of a house. Michelangeli was the master of Gaspar de la Nuit, the suite containing Scarbo, and his recordings taken from live performances are legendary. He takes Scarbo at a considerably slower pace than other pianists, but this enables him to maintain the tempo, creating a staggering effect at the piece's climax. Number 7. Schumann's Toccata Schumann's Toccata is not performed as often today as it once was, but still remains one of his finest early works. Pianists tend to avoid it mostly due to its difficulty, which makes it an automatic inclusion on this list. It probably holds the record for sheer number of notes per second, as the writing is very dense, often with double notes in both hands, rare even in etudes. Its difficulties mainly centre around these double notes, but it also has extremely difficult leaps and chordal passages, and it requires a very large hand to play comfortably. Legend has it that Schumann damaged his hand practising his toccata, but in reality it was through using a contraption of his own making to strengthen his fingers that the irreversible injury occurred. There are great recordings of this toccata by Richter and Horowitz. Number 6. La Campanella by Liszt I'm referring here to the revised version of La Campanella after Liszt simplified the writing and made it generally more comfortable to play. And even with Liszt's simplifications, the piece still makes this list. I know of no other piece requiring such rapid leaps around the keyboard, and it seems impossibly difficult when first encountered. Counterintuitively, the key to playing it is to play with abandon and complete freedom instead of carefully trying to land each jump. Liszt used to tell his students that the secret to playing such passages is to not try, 
or in the words of Yoda, Do or do not. There is no try. It's also incredibly effective writing and no mere stunt. Atmospheric and scintillating, full of imaginative pianistic effects. The epitome of virtuoso piano music. It requires a very supple technique, and it's essential to stay calm and relaxed. Trying too hard will result in tension setting in, which makes the piece even harder. Some pianists do manage to force their way through it, but the piece loses something. Number 5. Hammerklavier Sonata, Last Movement by Beethoven. The Hammerklavier is the Mount Everest of the piano literature, and the Fugue is one of the most unrelenting pieces of piano writing ever penned. Its near atonality makes it very difficult to memorise, as well as being just barely possible for human hands to play. Beethoven added metronome marks for the Sonata, and very few pianists can play the Sonata at the specified speed. There's much debate over whether Beethoven's speed should be taken as gospel, not because he didn't write them in, but because at the time he wrote it, he was imagining all his music in his head, and he probably wasn't aware of exactly what he was asking of the performer. Had he actually tried playing it himself, the argument goes, he might not have chosen such extreme tempos. In any Number 4. Brahms Paganini Variations, Book 1. Clocking in at just under 15 minutes, Brahms's Paganini Variations are also a work most pianists shy away from, despite its undoubted compositional quality. The variations make extreme demands across a variety of technical areas. Sixths. Thirds. Octaves. the Sandos but it's probably the huge and relentless leaps that are the most treacherous Michelangelo made a recording that has never been matched and the bootleg live recordings that exist are also extraordinary the playing full of demonic fire coupled with supreme control and clarity. Number 3. Chopin Etude Opus 10, Number 1. Every pianist remembers the moment they first encounter Chopin's great C major etude that begins his monumental Opus 10. It ushers in a new era of piano music, breaking decisively from the piano writing of Beethoven and Schubert, who were both still alive at the time this etude was composed. Chopin creates a raw surge of sonority, a sound world like nothing else written up until this time. In creating this new world, Chopin seems to ask the impossible. Extremely fast broken arpeggios spanning 10 to 12 notes each, requiring huge stretches between the 4th and 5th fingers, coupled with rapid expansions and contractions of the hand. Pianists discovering this etude for the first time are usually shocked and depressed when they start to learn it. It really is that hard and takes most pianists months to learn. And even when its difficulties are overcome, playing it accurately is something most pianists never accomplish. It's an unparalleled tightrope act that has claimed many a victim at piano competitions, such is its unforgiving nature. And to make things worse, its transparent texture leaves the pianist simply nowhere to hide, every smudge or slight inaccuracy highlighted for the audience. But every pianist must master this and the other etudes of Chopin. Without these etudes, the doors to much of the piano kingdom will remain locked forever. Number 2. La Semaine Grasse from Petrushka by Stravinsky. Much like Chopin's Opus 10, 
Petrushka simply confounds pianists working on it for the first time. While the first two movements are extremely difficult, it's the final movement that requires a completely new approach to technique and raises the bar significantly for what a pianist must be able to do. The most notorious parts are the fast thirds in the left hand that need to be played with the weakest fingers. And the relentless massive leaps towards the end that are near impossible to play accurately. Unlike other pieces on this list, you can't pedal over the hard bits. It's unforgiving in exposing any technical weakness, and it's understandable why it was considered unplayable for so long. But then you listen to Polini's recording and become convinced he's made a pact with the devil, such as his effortless mastery of Petrushka. You might think his recording was heavily edited for accuracy, but I've linked a live performance from 1980 that's almost as perfect, with even more passion and excitement. Number one, Fur Filet by Liszt. I wanted to avoid having two pieces from the same composer on this list, but it's hard to ignore the legendary difficulty of Liszt's compositions. Liszt's etudes are of an entirely different nature to Chopin's. Where Chopin's have a crystalline texture in which the difficulties are often not readily apparent, Liszt's etudes are in your face. Furious and exciting, the thunderous virtuoso to the fore. While a few of Liszt's transcendental etudes could potentially make it onto this list, Fur Filet is by far the most treacherous. Not because of any extroverted extremes, but almost the opposite. Liszt asks the pianist to play continuous double notes, awkwardly spaced for anything but a huge hand, and to play them extremely fast and lightly. Most pianists who manage to play it up to speed end up making it sound like a lawnmower, the required lightness and speed eluding them. I think this is what makes the piece the undisputed number one on this list. All the others can eventually be mastered with enough practice, but with Fur Filet, the task seems hopeless to almost everyone. Achieving the speed is one thing, but doing it with the right character is another thing entirely. For many, only Richter has managed to play Fur Filet as Liszt intended. Even super virtuosos such as Horowitz have simply avoided playing it altogether. Probably only Richter and Liszt himself have ever managed to play it, and for me, that seals the deal. So there you have it, the 10 hardest pieces of piano music ever written. Quantifying difficulty is tricky, and there is obviously a lot of subjectivity in the choices. Perhaps in the future it might be fun to come up with a formula that can be used to measure difficulty, giving weightings to notes per second, average distance between notes, density of chords, etc., and have a computer scan the entire piano repertoire. But then again, is there really any point? Most concert pianists are much more scared of playing Mozart than Scarbo anyway. Mm -hmm.